Thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, to this very excellent conference. And uh, it's a very big honor for me to be with these excellent uh, speakers and professor. And today, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, two parts uh, of my presentation. In the first part, uh, I will review uh, the current economic developments in major countries for our discussion. And in the second part, I will talk about some uh, cross-cutting downside risk factors for the global economy. So as you know, uh, and uh, as IMF uh, forecasted, the global economy is obviously uh, recovering uh, uh, these days. Uh, but uh, I think the world economy is yet to uh, make a complete recovery from the 2008 global economic crisis. It is still uh, suffering from a long period of a weak economic activity. Uh, but uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of this year, uh, the world economy uh, started to show some different landscapes. Let's see the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy, I think, entered a cyclically very new phase. Uh, you know, the U.S. Fed uh, is expected to raise its uh, policy rate once again within uh, this year, and it has already announced the uh, balance sheet normalization uh, program. Uh, it started uh, from October this year, uh, and uh, so uh, we uh, project the U.S. economy to grow at 2.1% uh, uh, in 2018. Uh, it is a little bit uh, higher level than uh, this year's growth rate. Uh, the driving force of the U.S. economy is, I think, the strong pickup in uh, private consumption and investment and based on the improving labor market and the weak dollar. Uh, thanks to the weak dollar, the U.S. Uh, export to the other countries has recovered uh, these days. And however, I think there are two uh, main uh, downside risks for the United States. The first one is the policy uncertainty under the uh, Trump administration. For example, Yesterday, uh, the Trump administration announced the new tax cut uh, program. Uh, if the tax cut program actually be implemented, then uh, that action uh, will uh, have some big impact on the long-term interest rate and the U.S. dollar exchange rates. So. Uh, there are uh, still a lot of uncertainty surrounding the Trump administration's economic policy. This is the first uh, downside risk factor. And the second one is, the, as you know, the, the normalization of the monetary policy. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, President Trump uh, nominated uh, Jer Jerome Powell uh, for the next Fed chair, and, and maybe he will uh, still uh, maintain the monetary policy stance uh, in the coming years, but uh, there remains still a lot of uh, uncertainty surrounding the monetary policy in the U United States. And the second is the Eurozone. The Eurozone is also picking up this year, and uh, the inflation rate of uh, Eurozone has moved to around 1.5%, which is a, a very closer to the 2% target. But uh, the unemployment rate is uh, still very high. It remains at 9.1% uh, in recent months, a record low. Uh, still uh, for the last uh, eight years, though. Uh, the increase in growth in 2017 reflects an acceleration in exports uh, and a continued strength in domestic demand. Uh, 
but uh, there are uh, still uh, downside risks. Uh, we are very concerned by the two uh, major downside risks. The first is, you know, the uh, Brexit negotiation, and the second is the weak growth in real wage. The, the real wage growth is very, very weak in the European economies, and that is, I think, the main uh, barrier to the uh, active recovery of the United and uh, the, the European economies. For Japan, uh, we see a very similar economic recovery process, but uh, Japan, Japanese economy has the same problem, very weak growth in real wage. This is a very big problem, and I think this is, uh, uh, this is the main reason why uh, we cannot anticipate the longer-term economic recovery in Japan. And for China, uh, we expect uh, still very high level of uh, economic growth next year, 6.7%, uh, a little bit uh, lower uh, than this year's uh, ex expected growth rate, 6.8%. But I think the Chinese economy's the biggest problem is it is kind of a bad fueled economy, bad fueled economy. Uh, the, so uh, I think the issue should be addressed if the uh, sustainable economic growth is to be maintained for a longer term in the future. And we expect further economic recovery in some large emerging economies, especially in Russia and uh, Brazil. You know, these uh, economies have suffered from recession for the last three years due to the drastic fall in oil, gas, and other commodity uh, prices. Uh, these economies are, however, showing an upturn uh, recently, and this trend is expected to continue in the next year. Uh, but uh, the problem in these economies is that they are too dependent on oil, gas, and other commodities. So uh, they need to diversify the economy uh, much stronger. I will uh, briefly mention the cross-cutting uh, potential negative factors for the global economy. The first uh, risk factor is, uh, which is already mentioned, uh, inward-looking protectionism in the advanced economies. This is a very big problem for many countries. For example, the South Korea uh, is facing a very big problem with uh, the U.S. because the U.S. government asks uh, the renegotiation of the uh, Korea-U.S. Uh, FTA. Uh, big issue in South Korea. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we have to be careful of the proliferation of uh, the you know, looking protectionism in advanced economies. And the second uh, risk factor is, the, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned, the very weak uh, real wage growth rate uh, in advanced economies, especially in the European countries and in Japan. And so big problem for those two big economies. And lower inflation rate is also a very big problem. Uh, a lower inflation rate tends to lead to weaker consumer confidence, weaker business confidence. Uh, so uh, the world economy has not uh, succeeded yet in completely ending the deflation mindset, which is very, very prevalent in many advanced uh, economies. And finally, uh, the, I'd like to mention the changes in international financial conditions. The U.S. Fed has already begun to raise its policy rate, and there is a mood of uh, tapering in the European central banks. Uh, the, there are many emerging economies propelled by capital inflow 
from the advanced economies. That fueled emerging economies, I think, should normalize their balance sheet. Before accommodative financial conditions are ended, this is a very big uh, policy task for the emerging economies. Thank you.